Bunch of Crunch Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Listen, guys, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm motivating you to be the best version of yourselves. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Listen, we are a family, and you are a part of it. Yeah, I said you. So today, man, I'm so excited. We're going to be looking at seven things nearly every player is doing wrong in season four of Fortnite. Throughout our experiences in coaching and you know reviewing some gameplay, we noticed quite a few common yet impactful mistakes that plenty of you guys are still making, right? From back shockwave grenades, you know, taking 50-50s, these flaws in gameplay are more influential than you might think, and even one can be the difference between you screaming, let's go, or just quitting the game. So it is my mission, guys, to prevent you guys from making these types of slip ups. And so, you know, they may not apply to every single one of you. I get it. But we pick mistakes that we think should help you guys, you know, win more fights. But right before we hop into this, all right, the next season is just around the corner. And that's why ProGuys.com is here to help you guys improve fast. So head on over and hire yourself a professional coach. Our coaches are tailored to help you guys improve, you know, at your own pace. So check us out. All right, all right, all right. So the first mistake that we see quite often and well, oh, it has to do with shockwave grenades, specifically when players use them to break into enemy boxes. So most of us kind of just toss a shockwave at our feet and just yellow it into our opponent's box. But without a proper setup, we usually end up either breaking past or below them, which wastes our shockwaves. They really just waste valuable time. What's better is having a setup, right? The best one that we've seen this season has you do this. All right, so you count one tile away from your enemy's box, then place a ramp facing their box and a floor in front of your ramp. Stand on the floor with your back to your ramp, then toss your shockwave at the other side of the floor, and it should just send you directly into the back of your opponent's box. It's going to break their front wall and ceiling, so what I recommend is that you get off one pump shot, then place a roof to prevent them from ramping out. And that's pretty much it, man. Two extra tips for this technique. One is that if there's a cone in your opponent's box, all right, you'll sometimes bump into that top part and won't end up in the back of your opponent's box. So what you can do to prevent this is either just stand to the left or right of your floor as you shockwave in and not in the middle. And second, you can do this technique while entirely boxed up. This makes it perfect for those in-game situations where you need a cheeky impact frag on a guy near you. Either way, let me say this, speed is the essence, my friends. And the great thing about this technique is how quickly you can do it. It's just a minimum of a ramp, floor, shockwave, and then you're in. Simple, and it really is extremely worth learning. All right, moving on though, here we go. One thing we keep hearing you guys ask is, how do I become a faster editor? I get this all the time on my Insta. And you know, really practice is crucial here, Like, but one thing most of us don't even think about is proper crosshair placement. Let's take the Mongrel Classic. For example, so there are four steps involved that have our crosshair going all over the place. But here's the thing, as long as we prep our crosshair to be in the spot it needs, we can minimize its movement, thus speeding up the pace. So while prepping for a Mongrel Classic, you ideally want your crosshair to be by the bottom middle edit tile as you just take your opponent's wall. This makes it so that once you place your wall, your crosshair is already in the position needed to start your edit. And that edit would be from the bottom middle tile to left middle, so a bottom left corner edit. From here, you can then just place your ramp, and again, your crosshair is already in a spot where you can already start the ramp edit. But before you confirm your ramp edit, this is where you want to adjust your crosshair back to head height, which should make landing your follow-up shot a lot easier. So that's the only example. Really, you just need to consider this with all your edits, not only just to make your follow-up edit easier, but also to make landing shots much easier as well. Okay, so another thing that leads to faster editing speed is efficient crosshair movements. You don't want to select the whole tile or parts that are unnecessary, only the very edges that are closest to the next tile you need to select. Like, think of the corner arch edit. You could do a large circle where your crosshair sort of just sits around the middle of each edit tile. Or you could just do a really right circle where your crosshair barely leaves the four corners of each tile you're selecting. Both really work with practice, but tighter crosshair movements are faster. Not by a whole lot but it's still enough to make a difference these are just examples but the next time that you're in an edit course think about your crosshair movement all right try to make it all as efficient and tight as possible so you can just build up your muscle memory that way and just start making faster edits overall 
So third is something that we still see a lot of you guys struggle with, and that's being impatient with your shot. Who is guilty of this? I know I've been there. More often than not, like Fortnite is a game that rewards taking your time. Think about the pump shotgun or sniper. Like they shoot at a snail's pace, but each shot is so impactful. You want to land them, right? So why go for a flick that's going to hit for 40 when you could just spend a fraction of a second lining up a shot that you can hit for 100 or 150? And that's something a lot of us are having trouble with, and that is our aim, especially pump aim. And we really need to realize that taking the time to line up your shot plays a huge part when it comes to landing bigger and more consistent hits. You got it? Of course, all right, you don't always have time to line up your shot. I understand. <laughs> but there's usually an opportunity that you're going to get, especially if you have peace control in the fight. By the way, taking time with your shots applies to rifles too. We often see players go for long range shots as soon as they spot their enemy. And it's unfortunate because they'll only land maybe like one bullet while exposing their position and losing whatever potential they had for an even bigger opportunity. In most situations, you should try to get into a more effective range before opening on an enemy, right? Because, of course, the opening shots of a fight make a huge difference when it comes to deciding the winner so next time you spot an enemy guys let me tell you this be patient close the gap first before going for rifle shots as long as they really don't see you that is and that bit of patience should really tip the scales of the fight in your favor of course, aim training is a huge thing when it comes to landing more shots. So if you're struggling to find a great routine, talk to one of our coaches, a one-on-one -on -one session that can really just help you learn everything that you need to know about aim training like the pros. Why try to learn it all by yourself? Get help from the pros today in the link below. Okay guys, so next, just like with the shot grade grenades, crash pad exploits are another area where we're seeing slight misplays here. So let's take the corner crash pad exploit for example. What you typically do here is attach two walls to the corner of your opponent's box, then pull out your crash pads to break in. But there are minor insufficiencies here, right? Like the time it takes to switch to your crash pads and the time it takes to pull out your weapon again. A better way to pull this technique off is to not only build the two walls, but to also build a floor above you with this, you don't need to pull out your crash pads manually. Instead, you spam the heck out of jump to use one, which gets you faster and allows you to keep your shotty out, making it all around a better version. Most crash pad exploits have you end up directly inside your opponent's box, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you haven't weakened your opponent already, it's not really advisable to make such a risky 50-50 play. So instead, what you can do that's safer is place a wall on top of your opponent's box, and then throw your crash pad at the top, but sort of just like at an angle, so that it doesn't land on you. It should land to the side and just break the wall, allowing you to hold and take it. So overall, guys, both these exploits, in our opinion, are just a lot better than the traditional ones 99% of players use. Definitely, you gotta learn them if you wanna start dominating more fights. All right, we gotta move on. So a lot of you guys probably already know this tip. So we weren't really gonna include it, but still, it's just so important, so we gotta say it. Please, 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 Put a cone in your box. This is something contender players and even some champ players never do. They always forget about peace control inside their box. Guys, it's your second line of defense after losing your wall. You need to be putting something in there. Now, we say a cone just because they're pretty versatile. You can just quickly edit them to block any direction and they always allow you to make aggressive edits easily. But a ramp works as well. So if you're gonna stay inside your box, you absolutely need to make sure you have something inside before your opponent even attempts to take your wall. If you're not already doing this, start. And trust me, it's gonna prevent so many deaths. All right, we gotta move on again. Here we go. The concept of peace control has definitely taken over the past year. It's an area that most of us are working toward bettering, right? But one mistake we keep seeing is when players box in their opponent only to end up going for a 50-50. For instance, all right, if you ramp over a full health enemy and completely just wall them in, what should you do? Well, the 50-50 is editing your ramp and just going for a close range duel. You might win if you land your shots, but there's no inherent advantage here since you haven't weakened your opponent. So a safer approach in this instance would be to box them in, edit out the side really quickly, and reset the wall into a window. This gives you an opportunity for a right hand peak shot and it separates you from your opponent overall, giving you a much bigger advantage in the fight. That's just one example, but the same applies to most peace control situations. Like, just because you got peace control doesn't mean you shouldn't rush in there and just go for the aim duel. Only do that if you're confident in your aim or if you have a significant health advantage, okay? Otherwise, you're making an overly risky play, which simply won't work especially against players that can actually land their shots. 
Lastly, guys, one thing that we see most players never do is utilize blueprint edits. So in case you don't know, there's a difference between editing with your weapon out and with your build out. If you have your builds out, you essentially have a slightly longer range when it comes to selecting and editing builds. Plus, it allows you to reset builds that you can't physically see, like those pesky corner edits that get blocked off by ramps. Anyways, all right, blueprint edits give you an edit range of about mm, slightly longer than one tile away, and it gets used all the time by pros like Clicks, for example. When he box fights, all right, he takes advantage of blueprint edits so that he doesn't have to tread into enemy builds to apply pressure. It keeps him safe in his own territory, and the added range makes him less predictable. Okay, so when should you blueprint edit? Well, let me say this. Anytime Time that you can't reach with the normal edit, but you know you can still intentionally use them to just press your opponent's wall from a safer position. Like if a single box separates you from your opponent, you can just hold your ground. You don't have to run up into their box. Instead, you can just replace the wall with your rifle and blueprint edit and blueprint edit it open to fire up some shots. And unless they know about blueprint editing, they probably won't even realize what's about to happen. And that's the power that you get with blueprint edits. Really though, you're not gonna be using them all the time. Situations where you know they're absolutely needed are kind of rare. Still, it is something that you do need to know. Definitely start thinking about them anytime you start fighting in that one box away range. All right, guys, thanks again for watching this video. If you guys found the tips helpful, all right, you already know what to do. Don't forget to leave a like and sub to the channel. Spread the word to all your friends, man. If this, you know, has been just amazing for you, all right? Let us know in the comments which tips surprise you guys the most. And just, you know, you can also leave any suggestions that you have for the Pro Guys team as well. Bunch your Crunch Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back, and I'll see you soon.